Next, uh, I will invite the general manager of the BIS, Mr. Augustine Carson. Augustine, become the general manager of the BIS since the 1st December of 2017. He holds uh, an MA, um, Master of the uh, MA and PhD in Economic from the University of uh, Chicago. Mr. Carson was governor of the Bank of Mexico from 2010 to 2017, a member of the BIS board from 2011 to 2017. He was uh, chair of the Global Economic Meeting and the Economic Consultative Council from 2013 until 2017. He also chaired the International Monetary and Financial Committee, the IMF's Policy Advisory Committee from 2015 to 2017. He began his career in 1980 at the Bank of Mexico from 1990 to 2000. He was executive director at the IMF. He later served as Mexico Deputy Finance Minister 2000-2003, and as Deputy Managing Director at the IMF 2003-2006. He was Mexico Finance Minister from 2006 to 2019. Mr. Carson has been a member of the Financial Stability Board since 2010 and is a member of the Group of 30. Agustin, please, your five minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Perry, for this uh, kind introduction and to having you in this conference. And of course, let me let me start by uh, thanking uh, Seti Aziz, Dr. Seti Aziz, for uh, her inspiration and drive to organize this conference. And more than anything, to thank her very much for all the work she's doing at the Asia School of Business, ha having very much in mind to deepen the education and human capital uh, related to central banking and financial authorities. It's a admirable project and uh, we wholeheartedly support it. And I join her in thanking all the participants and speakers to this event, and in particular also to uh, Queen Maxima that will uh, be here with us uh, tomorrow. And definitely, I, I wished uh, when we first talked about this conference, I had a very high expectation to be in Kuala Lumpur for it. Uh, but regretfully, given conditions, uh, it was impossible to travel. But I hope that in some other occasion, uh, we can do it uh, in presence there in Kuala, Kuala Lumpur. So this conference is about a longstanding objective uh, of fostering financial inclusion in the context of unprecedented technological development and uh, disruption. The inclusion objective, I should note, is not only about access to a bank account, but also about using it for payments, savings, or borrowing, uh, and using it uh, responsibly. The new development is digital technology in finance. The use of technology per se is not new. Uh, we can uh, remember that the first ATMs were introduced more than 50 years ago. It is a rapid pace of change that really is new. The marriage between digital technology, big data, and finance is fast creating opportunities for greater inclusion. As we will discuss today, it can help societies especially their, their uh, excluded segments to leapfrog ahead. For example, online Know Your Customer can make digital inroads that reach the financially excluded. Access generates data that uh, when properly used can reduce reliance on collateral. All these can make more products available to those already or recently included from savings to investments and from borrowing to insurance. Yet there is a risk that some may be left behind, exploited or losing the race. Those who cannot buy or use smartphones may be left behind. Those included in the traditional sense may become dropouts in the digital sense. Even the experienced ones may be exploited via algorithms that identify behavioral biases. 
and are the and, and are the risks to those piling easy debt or buying property in the metaverse well understood? The session tomorrow focuses on these issues. It is hard to predict or control how technology will evolve, but we can influence how technology reshapes finance and strive to ensure that it is benefit that it benefits all. The vision I have is for an open financial system built around the public-private partnership. The public sector would provide the game board, i.e. the infrastructure, and the rules, i.e. regulation and supervision. Private players would provide the new ideas and compete to the benefit of end users. Public institutions exist to serve the public. The trust they inject in the system is the anchor of society's confidence amid rapid change. The robust game board with fair rules they provide can ensure competitive play, avoid concentration of data and mitigate trend seeking. Consent-based data governance would give users control of their data and the dynamic ecosystem would constitute the perfect breeding ground for innovation. To harness benefits and minimize risks, policymakers must share with each other which solutions work and which do not, as the third session of the conference will elaborate on tomorrow. The VIS and the VIS Innovation Hub also offer forums to share knowledge and experiment. Let me close by stressing that truly inclusive finance in a rapidly changing world means ensuring equitable access and responsible use for all. One way forward is to work towards an open financial system with public-private partnership at the core. Certainly, I'm looking forward to hearing the insights from the excellent lineup of participants we have, many of them uh, colleagues of mine at Central Bank, bankers and very distinguished uh, former central bankers and with a very very a very good mix of uh, participants from academia and from a uh, social it's, it's, it's civil society so thank you very much for 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 the opportunity to participate in the organization of this event with the asia school of business and uh, thank you very much for uh, uh, devoting some time and effort to this very important uh, topic of financial uh, uh, innovation in the context of digital disruption. So thank you very much. The, I give the, the, fl the floor back to you, Perry. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Indita, Augustine.